Hey y'all, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are at in this time. Um, I am so um, just grateful to be able to speak on behalf of the Lord uh, on today regarding what he um, is designed to say to us. And so um, I'm just going to go ahead and get right into the word real quick. I'm going to pray and then we'll get into the word. Um, gracious Father, thank you so much, Lord God, for this day. Thank you, Lord God, for... Um, considering our situations, considering, Lord God, um, our circumstances, Father, and always um, caring about us so much, God, and we thank you for your compassion and your grace and just your heart towards us, God, and we thank you, Lord God, that you have the answer, Father, before our problems even arise, God, we thank you, Lord God, that you care so much about us, Father, that you've already sent the answer, Father, before we even finish praying, God, you even know what we're going to pray about before we've even come to you, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that you just care about us, God, in such a deep way, God. And we love you, we honor you, and we appreciate you. And we thank you, and we give you all thanks. We give you all praise and glory. In Jesus' name, we seal this word. We seal your plan for our lives, God. And we receive your love your compassion, your spirit, and your plan for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so just real quick, um, and God, we thank you, Lord God, that this word will not be hindered. It will not be blocked. It will not be plucked up by the enemy. This we declare and decree in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And so we just want to go into this word real quick. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, from the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 1 through 4. And this is coming from the message version. And it reads, um, But now God's message, the God who made you in the first place, Jacob, the one who got you started, Israel. Don't be afraid. I've redeemed you. I've called your name. You're mine. When you're in over your head, I'll be there with you. When you're in rough waters, you will not go down. When you're between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end because I am God, your personal God, the Holy of Israel, your Savior. I paid a huge price for you. All of Egypt with rich Cush and Seba thrown in. That's how much you mean to me. That's how much I love you. I'd sell off the whole world to get you back. Trade the creation just for you. And through this passage, the Lord had really been dealing with me and um, gave me the title um, of God says it's personal. God says it's personal. And when I looked up the word personal, the word personal um, means a particular, it means particular to a given individual concerning or affecting a particular person or thing. God says it's personal. And when it comes to you, it's personal concerning God. And so there were four points that um, the Lord had really highlighted um, throughout this passage. And the first point is you are called by your name. God calls you by your name. You are known and recognized in heaven by the Father. It's personal to God because anything and anyone that comes up against you is coming up against him and is coming up against his name and his marking on you. When anyone messes with you, they mess with God. And when I thought about that, um, I thought about how a parent, you know, protects their child and they want what's best and they want to secure and keep their child safe. So when you mess with my child, you mess with me. And that's how it is with the father. When anyone messes with you, they are literally coming up against the father and God will not have that. And so God not only calls you by your, your legal name, your birth name in the natural realm, but he also calls you by your heavenly name. You have a heavenly name. And it was so powerful um, when the Lord revealed to me my heavenly name. And it's not something that everyone should know unless God, you know, leads you to tell someone. But I really just encourage you to ask God on today, what is your name in the spiritual realm? 
What is your name in the heavenlies? What is your name? And also, when God calls you by name, um, that's deep because anyone can say, you know, um, yeah, that's my sister. That's my child. That's my friend. But when they call you by name, it just hit different. <laughs> it just hit different because it lets you know that, hey, they know my name like they know me. <laughs> and so uh, just be encouraged on today um, that God knows you by your name. He calls you by your name. Heaven knows you by your name. And that's huge. Point two is God's presence signifies his protection. God's presence signifies his protection. In verse two, it says, when you're in over your head, I'll be there with you. When you're in rough waters, you will not go down. When you're between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end. When you are in over your head, I'll be there with you. When you're in rough waters, you won't go down. When you're between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end. It's not the end for you. God's presence with you signifies his protection over you. Through the waters, he's right beside you. The weight of the waters won't even overtake you. They won't drown you. You won't even go down. You won't even go down. This is how strong God's presence is with you. You will not go underneath the waters. When you're boxed in, when your back is up against the wall, when your back is up against the ring, it's not the end for you. God got, God got that surprise upper hand. Like <laughs> he got that surprise attack just waiting. Like it's not the end for you. And it's not a surprise attack against you. It's a surprise attack against the things that's trying to come up against you. Like God is real deal for you. Like I'm telling you, God is so serious about you. He takes, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. God is avenging swiftly for his people. For those that have had, I'm telling you, honey, just, this is a word of the Lord. God is not playing about you. He is not playing about you. You know no dead ends. You know no dead ends. All you know is victory. All you know is success. All you know is prosperity. And all you know is wins. There are no dead ends for you. Point number three, God is glued to you. God is glued to you. Verse three says, because I am God, your personal God, the Holy of Israel, your savior. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I feel your presence. I paid a huge price for you. All of Egypt with rich Cush and Seba thrown in because I am God, your personal God, the Holy of Israel, your savior. I paid a huge price for you. All of Egypt with rich Cush and Seba thrown in. A personal assistant tends to every need of their boss. And this was just an illustration that uh, really came to my mind as the Lord was really revealing, you know, these points to me. So I saw like a personal assistant and how um, a personal assistant tends to every need of their boss. So whether they need coffee, whether they need, you know, um, a hotel room booked or, you know, uh, a car re on re reservation or a ticket booked, you know, for a flight or whether they need to alter a meeting time. A personal assistant is there to literally take care of every one of their boss's needs. And no, I'm not. God is most certainly not our um, our genie, our personal genie. That's not what this is. You know, that's not the revelation of this. But when it comes down to him being our personal God, God um, literally honors, you know, and takes care of our every need. We are his children and he tends to every one of our needs. So when he sees us in need of, it's almost like what you need, I got you. What you want, I got you. 
And this is for, you know, when you when you walk upright with the Lord, when you are in right standing with him and right standing does not mean that you're perfect. It means that you fall short, but you get back up and you make the choice to honor God by correcting, you know, that choice, correcting that step. So it, it does not have anything to do with you being perfect. None of us are perfect. Trust me. I know <laughs> none of us are perfect and God has not called us to be perfect. He's just called us to be obedient and loyal to him and he himself will perfect us in his timing. And so um, God literally tends to our every need. You need housing. I've got you. You need food. I've got you. You need love. I've got you. You need compassion. You need forgiveness. You need comfort. You need peace of mind. I've got you. You need transportation. You need income. I've got you. He doesn't. The thing I love about God is he is not limited. Um, He doesn't just have us, you know, on the spiritual level. Like he's got us when it comes to peace of mind, when it comes to comfort, when it comes to strength, when it comes to healing, when it comes to deliverance and freedom inwardly. But he's also the God of the external as well. So when he sees a need, he is ready, honey. He is ready. The word of God tells us that he is an ever-present help, always ready to help in the time of need. So he is ready to assist us, not just inwardly, but outwardly as well. So again, like if you need housing, God got you. If you need a, um, you know, a vehicle, God's got you. And he don't just give you, you know, just anything. He gives you something specifically for your need. He tailors your blessing according to your need. If you need a spouse, God's got you. Whatever you need, God has you. He has you. He has you. Don't be afraid. God has called you by name. He knows you. He has selected you. He has chosen you. He has marked you and you will not be put to shame. You will not be put to shame. God is glued to you. He loves you so much that he is glued to you. Wherever you go, I'm with you. I hear that. The story of Joshua where God affirms his constant presence with Joshua, just as he did with Abraham, just as he did with Jacob. God is with you. He is with you. He is with you. And so um, the next point that I really wanted to touch on um, that the Lord had revealed to me is, um, you know, and still dealing with point number three, where it mentions, you know, God is glued to us. He's paid a huge price for us. God gave up and will skip over, you know, things and other people just to tend to us, just attend to, to his righteous ones, just to tend to, you know, his children, his selected ones, his anointed ones. He will destroy everything that was sent to destroy us, to destroy you. This is how serious God is about us. And honey, you are not just loved by God, but you are loved, loved by God. (laughs) Honey, you are loved, loved by God. Like I can't even describe how much God loves you. Like I can't even describe how much God loves me. Like I can't fathom it, but just know that we are real deal, like love, loved by God. And he plays no games when it comes to us. God doesn't hide how he feels about us. He doesn't hide how he feels about you. He puts it on display, honey. He puts it out in the open for all to see. And just like that individual, you know, that my God, that's coming back into your life to let you know, I feel that God. Um, for somebody, that that's a word for somebody. That's confirmation for somebody. For that loved one that's coming back into your life, that spouse that's coming back into your life to prove to you that I'm not playing no games about you this time. I am all about you and only you. I only want you and only you. I am committed to you and only you. I am writing for you and only you. Like This is literally like a demonstration 
of um, the love that God has for us. Like God is about us and only us. Like he plays no games when it comes to us. I'm telling you, God is so serious and madly in love with us. He is deeply in love with us. And it's such a beautiful thing. I just be finding myself smiling, just thinking about the love of God. Like even now, like it is just ridiculous how much God, (laughs) how much God loves us. When um, I think about like all the times I have like failed God and I don't condemn myself because condemnation is not of God. He doesn't condemn us. He just corrects us. Um, He may convict us like we will feel a conviction in our spirit um, that brings us to a point of God. I'm sorry. I am sorry. And then he loves us and gets us back in the race. But he does not condemn us to the point where we should feel, you know, um, heavy with shame and heavy with guilt and heavy with remorse and all those things. He just corrects us and puts us back, you know, in our rightful place. And so to the person that's dealing with shame and guilt, I speak the, the peace and the freedom of God over you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I command the spirit of guilt and the spirit of shame and the spirit of heavy remorse and those traumatic, you know, moments replaying in your mind and you beating up on yourself and you um, lessening yourself and demeaning yourself. I bind and rebuke that right now in the name of Jesus. And I command it to flee from you and I command it to go to the abyss where it belongs and to return no more. And I command the peace of the living God to flood you, to embrace you, to overtake you and to overwhelm you in the most purest form in Jesus name. And so um, just finishing up with point number three of how God is literally glued to you because he is your personal God and he tends to your every need. Um, he does not hide his love for you. He puts it on open display. And that's why the enemy is so mad. That's why Satan is so mad because the devil messed up. Satan messed up one time and lost his seat. But we mess up nearly. Ain't no nearly. We mess up. I don't know about you, but I have messed up literally every single day. Every single day. And God still has our seats on reserve. He will not let anybody take our seat. Nope. I know she messed up, but this blessing is still hers. I know he messed up, but this miracle is still his. I know he messed up, but this promotion is still his. I know they messed up, but this is still theirs. They still have a right to this because my grace has covered them. My grace is sufficient enough. Where sin abounds, the word of God tells us where sin abounds, the grace of God abounds all the more. So we may see, you know, this this pool of sin in our life. But around that pool of sin is an ocean of grace. And we know that an ocean is way much larger than a pool itself. So God's grace covers a multitude. His love covers a multitude of sin. And so it washes away all of that sin, all of our wrongdoings, all of our shortcomings, all of our failures, all of our mistakes. God's grace washes that all away. And so your seat is still unreserved. This is how personal God takes you. This is how serious God is about his love for you. He still reserves your blessings. He still reserves all the goodness that he has in store for you. So don't be bound up in, you know, how you continue to fall short. Focus on the goodness of God. Yes, correct your actions and allow God to correct you um, as well. But focus on the goodness of God. Don't beat yourself up. If you've fallen short, repent. Acknowledge that you've fallen short. Acknowledge that you sinned and ask God to strengthen you in that area. Allow him to um, be that strength for you in that area and move forward. Don't stay in that area. Don't stay in your mistake. That's what the enemy wants you to do. Keep moving forward. God already knew you was going to fall. God already knew you were going to make that mistake. It's not, it didn't catch him by surprise. God didn't say, they did it again. No, God does not do that. He already, because he's God and he's all knowing, he knows all of our shortcomings. 
to the day that he takes us out of the earth. He already knows every single one of our slip ups and he still loves us the same. His love don't change. His word lets us know that he's the same yesterday, today and forevermore. Like he's never going to change the way that he feels, the way that he thinks about you. Never. So even though you fall short, stop seeing yourself as a failure. Stop seeing your, yourself, you know, as one who can't get right. I, I I reject and bind and rebuke that mindset. Yes, you can get right when you do it through the Father because all things are possible with God. All things are possible with God. Stop striving for, stop striving, period. But don't go, stop going for perfection and go for progression. I'm not wanting to be perfect. I just want to progress in God every single day. Whether it's by one step, whether it's by two step, whatever that looks like, I just want to progress. So whether that's, I just, I want to stop smoking. I want to stop cussing. I want to stop, you know, hanging with the wrong people, letting the wrong people into my life. I want to stop, you know, being prayerless. So let me pray for, you know, five minutes a day. And that's a start. That's a step. That's progress. It's better than nothing. I'm not the same person I was yesterday. I'm not focused on... Um, you know, I, I'm not the same person I was last year. No, I'm not the same person I was yesterday. Pro- small progress brings forth big results. It's not the big, the big process because you have to break it down into baby steps. Break it down into baby steps. Just as a person trying to lose weight, don't just cut out, you know, um, everything all at once. You know what? Today I'm just gonna I'm gonna limit, you know, my caffeine intake. I'm gonna limit my sugar intake. I'm gonna limit, you know, um my portion sizes. Just small steps. I'm gonna limit, you know, my outtake, you know, eating out. Small steps bring forth big results. And so uh point number four and then we'll wrap up here. Um his actions prove his love. God's actions prove his love. Verse number four says, that's how much you mean to me. That's how much I love you. I'd sell off the whole world to get you back. Trade the creation just for you. That's how much you mean to me. That's how much I love you. That is how much I love you. I'd sell off the whole world to get you back. Trade the creation just for you. Baby, I would give it all up for you. Baby, I would go to Calvary again for you. I would be crucified again just for you. Just for you. When you stray away from me, I'm I'm coming after you. I don't care. I, I care about the 99, but I also care about the one just as I do as the 99. I'm not leaving you out there to die. I'm not leaving you out there for the enemy to overtake you. I'm not leaving you out there for the waters to overtake you. I'm not leaving you out there for the fire to consume you. I'm not leaving you in the fire, but I'm your personal God and I'm God enough to get in the fire with you. I'm God enough to be right beside you. When the enemy is trying to play games with your mind, when the enemy is trying to distort your image, when the enemy is coming up against your real identity, when the enemy is trying to make you feel worthless, when the enemy is trying to make you feel like a failure, like you're not good enough, like you're not pretty enough, like you're not handsome enough, when the enemy is trying to come up against you. I'm stepping in because you're mine and you belong to me and I love you. And I'm stepping in to fight this battle for you. I'm stepping in to conquer this thing for you. I'm stepping in to move this mountain for you. I am your God and I love you. And my actions prove my love for you. I'm not about talk. I'm all about action when it comes to you. John 3 and 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It doesn't say that God so loved the world that he spoke. No, he so loved the world that he gave. Gave demonstrates action. I don't just love you. I don't just say that I love you, but I'm willing to give of myself from for you. I'm willing to give up things for you. I'm willing to sacrifice myself for you because that's how much you mean to me. That's how deep my commitment, my loyalty, my plan is for you. I love you and my actions will continuously reveal my love for you. My actions will continuously prove my love for you. Don't you see how much I love you? I didn't leave you where you were. I refuse to leave you where you are. 
I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. I am coming for you. You will not die where you are. You will no longer be stuck. You will no longer feel depressed. You will no longer deal with the the thoughts of suicide. You will no longer, no longer suffer from anxiety. No longer suffer from eating disorders. You will no longer suffer in regards to your body image. You will no longer suffer with poverty and lack. You will no longer suffer with homelessness. You will no longer suffer with confidence, low self-esteem, insecurities. You will no longer suffer because I'm coming for you. And when I come for you, I'm coming to wipe out all of those things that came to wipe you out. This is how much I love you. This is how much I care. It's personal. It's personal. God says it's personal. God says it's personal. Come to God. Come to God. Come to God. His word tells us, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For the soul that has been running from God for a long, long time, years you've been running as a prodigal, you know that you're called. You know that there's something different about you. You know that you're uncommon. Stop rebelling. Stop running. You're tired. Your mind is tired. Your spirit is tired. Your soul is tired. You don't have to keep running. You don't have to be tired anymore. You don't have to be weary anymore. You don't have to be depressed anymore. Just come to God. Take rest in him. Let him lead you. Let him guide you. Let him be your strength. Let him be your shield. Let him bless you. Let him prosper you. Let him do the work for you. Let him take on the heavy load. Yes, you'll still be required to do work, but he's going to take on the heavy load. For his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Cast your cares on him. He cares so much about you that he doesn't even want you to care about your cares. He wants you to be aware of them, what you're feeling and what you're going through, what you're facing. But he doesn't want you to take them on. He wants you to cast, to give them to him, to lay them at his feet, to throw them at his throne. And he will supply every one of your need according to his riches and glory. Romans 10 and 9 says that when we believe in our heart, when we confess with our mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, just like that, we are saved. Just like that, we are saved. So for the individual that wants to come to Christ today, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead for your sins. And just like that, you are saved. And then also going over to the book of Acts. Repent. Acts 2 and 38. Repent. Acknowledge your sins. Be honest with God about where you've been in your relationship with him. And he's not going to condemn you. He just wants you to confess your faults because he's faithful and just to forgive as long as we confess. As long as we acknowledge before him that we were wrong then he can come in with that healing and just flood away all the guilt and the shame and the sin and the wickedness. He can just remove all of that. He just wants to cleanse you. He wants you to feel refreshed. He wants you to feel renewed. He wants you to be restored and revived. God wants that for you. Life more abundantly is your portion. He doesn't just want to give you life, but he wants to give you life more abundantly. Life with greater meaning, life with greater fulfillment. And so Acts 2 and 38 says to repent and be baptized. Every one of us, not just some of us, but every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ for the complete remission, the complete removal of your sins. Like you ain't even did nothing. God blots out that transgression. He, he literally gives us a clean slate. When we, when we repent, 
and, you know, be baptized in his name. He removes that thing. And then there's a promise at the end of that, Acts 2 and 38. You receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You shall receive, not you might, not you may, but you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Spirit, which is his spirit. And when you have the spirit of God dwelling within you, you are unstoppable. The word of God lets us know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So that means you are becoming greater. When you house the spirit of the Lord within you, you are now greater than any opposition, any devil, any demon, even Satan himself that could ever come up against you. And it's not you that's greater, but it's the spirit within you and living through you that makes you greater because God is. You're not living for yourself, but you're living for God now. God is living through you to not only transform you, but to transform the lives of individuals that he has connected to you and those that he has called you to. And so just be encouraged on today and welcome to the journey of faith. Welcome to um, the goodness of the Lord and entering your relationship with God. And I cover you right now in the name of Jesus, that your mind would be at peace that you would experience God in such a beautiful and transformative way that he would literally cause you to smile in the midst of your day. And you don't even know why you're smiling. You're just smiling because you feel so good about the love of God and what has taken place in your life. And I cover your home. I cover your job. I cover your family. I cover your dreams, your aspirations, everything, every vision that God has placed within you, every business, every ministry. I cover your desires with the blood of Jesus. Any children that you would have, spouse, I cover the, the works of your hands in the mighty name of Jesus. Your destiny, I plead the blood of Jesus over it. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus. We seal this word. We thank you. We honor you. We love you. Father, we bind and rebuke all backlash and retaliation of the evil one, and we forbid it in the mighty name of Jesus. Because that which we forbid on earth is forbidden in heaven, and that which we loose on earth is loose in heaven. So we loose your glory your spirit, your movement, your favor, your grace, your mercy, so God, your blessings in such an hmm, an innumerable way, God, in such a grand way. This day, now faith, we got now faith that you move in today, you move in now on behalf of your people. And it's in Jesus' name, we thank you for feeding us, nourishing our bodies, our spirit and soul and our mind and heart this day. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you and take care and be encouraged. And remember that God says it's personal. Take care.